Welcome to this demo of software testing training. This is part one. What is software testing? If you want to contact us, you can visit our website at www.qatrainingexperts.com or email us at contact us at qatrainingexperts.com. All right, welcome. This is the very first part of my training class. Okay. In this part of the training, I'm going to be teaching you why testing is important. What is testing? How do we do it? When do we do it? Um, the first week of training is methodology. And that's to give you the foundation you're going to need to be able to understand the hands-on training, which is in the second week. The entire class takes about four weeks to complete. You know, we can do it in a shorter time frame, but you know, from my experience teaching people over the last seven years, it, it takes about a, a good four weeks. You know, there's a lot of people out there who say, you know, they can train you in two weeks. They'll train you in in everything. They'll help you with a resume. They'll teach you uh, quality center, QTP, load runner. Uh, it's impossible. Okay, I've been in QA for 17 years. It, you're learning a new career. Right? It's going to take a lot of time on your part, a lot of time on my part, to really understand all of the different activities that a tester needs to understand in order to be successful. Right? I mean, if it only took two weeks for someone to get in the door to QA, I mean, everybody would be getting in the door to QA. I have a lot of my students who come to me, my new students, who have taken training from other people and they just have not been able to get a job. And that's mainly because, you know, one, they don't have the knowledge, two, they don't have the confidence. Confidence is so important to get past that interview process. You know, if you're not confident in your knowledge in QA, if you're not confident in how to do QA, and if you're not confident about what's in your resume you're not going to get past the interview you know uh, you can know everything under the sun but if you can't talk successfully about your experience and about your knowledge you'll never get past the interview and so what that's one of my strengths when we get to the last week is to help you with interview training you know taking you through all of the different questions someone could ask you uh, about methodology, about the tools I'm going to be teaching you, about your resume. Um, also, you know, on interviews they ask you a lot of questions that are even outside of all of that. You know, um, a lot of situational questions. You know, tell me about a challenge you had while working on a project and how you overcame it. Um, all of these questions I've captured with answers, and we're going. We'll work together to get you ready to talk the talk. I mean, I, when you look at this, it's kind of split into two things, where we need to teach you how to walk the walk and then also how to talk the talk. All right, you need both to get to be successful. I mean, QA is a great field to get your foot in the door. Uh, the money that you can make in QA is great. I mean, you can make, most of my students make $35 to $40 an hour, which is seventy to 80000 once they get in the door. And then you, from there, you can go wherever you want to go. I mean, you work with all types of IT people once you're in the door. So, I take a very personal approach to this, to this training. You know, I partner with each person. Sometimes we'll meet as a group. Sometimes we'll just meet one on one. Everyone learns differently, and I've learned that over the course of the years. And I've improved this course over the course of the years to help make things easier for you to understand. So we're going to start very basic. It's going to be very basic. And then as we go through week by week by week, we're going to get more advanced. You know, So this part of methodology is just basic methodology. I have also advanced methodology that I will be teaching you, but you got to learn the basics first, understand the activities and how to do them. And that's what hands-on is all about. And then we'll get into more advanced topics. During hands-on, I'm going to take you through an actual project. You're going to be doing all of the things that a tester does, from planning testing to preparing for testing, execution of testing. 
I teach you how to do it without a tool and then how to do it with a tool and then we'll get into automation All right, so I look forward to really working with you partnering with you so that you are successful I am not successful unless you're successful you know most of you I'm working with probably I'm working and doing job placement once this is all done and I work with people until they are hired because you know, that's one of my guarantees you know, if I can't teach you the knowledge you're never going to get in the door so I'm not I don't think there's anyone out there that guarantees job placement um, again thank you for Again, thank you for choosing my course and letting me train you. So let's go ahead and get started. Next subject, software testing can be performed manually or through the use of an automated tool. This is called automation testing. You've got manual testing and you have automation testing. In this training, most of the focus is going to be teaching you how to do manual testing. We also are going to be learning a tool called Quick Test Professional, which is an automation tool. Uh, manual testing is done by a person, someone sitting there, like yourself, sitting there and making sure the software is doing everything it's supposed to do, clicking on all the buttons, making sure all the drop down lists have all the right values inputting data for example clicking search uh, we're testing it manually <clears throat> automation testing is creating a program to test the application automatically we create those programs through the use of an automated tool it's like creating a macro uh, it's kinda like using the VCR we hit record we go in there mimic a user we hit stop and then we can play that program it kind of it's actually today these are like little programs we pl hit play and the automated tool will go out there and basically simulate a user testing okay you may say well why don't why isn't all testing done that way it can't be there's no way automation is going to replace manual testing uh, and we'll talk more about that but you can't automate something that you don't know if it works or not. Automation testing is more for later on in the testing process. We always have to do manual testing. So most of the jobs that are out there on the market are looking for somebody for manual testing. All right, what is a requirement? So I just talked about a requirement or requirements. And this is just to reinforce it a little bit more. Requirements are needs and expectations from the business and users. Requirements communicate how the product should work technically. And a requirement is a characteristic that a product or solution must possess to be acceptable, acceptable to the business or users. All right. Now, just to help you picture this, um, a requirement requirements are documented in a word in a word doc. You know, it's basically kind of like uh, you know when you go out and you you buy a TV or you buy a program and you open it up and it's got a user guide and the user guide tells you all the things it's supposed to be able to do, all the features and functions, right? Or when you go out, I mean, I just bought a new cell phone and it came with like a book almost with all of the different features and functions of that phone. Those would, you can picture those as requirements. Those, uh, that user guide from the phone outlines all the major features and functions. Okay, Before that user guide was created, someone had to sit down and document what they wanted that phone to be able to do. They had to sit down and, and list out all of the things they needed that software, or excuse me, that cell phone to do. And actually, cell phones are soft, are mostly software driven. Um, but requirements are exactly that. Requirements are written by the business, <coughs> excuse me, are written by the business to document exactly what they need that software to do and it's a very detailed document sometimes it's 30 40 50 60 70 pages long our job 
is to take that document and go through it and make sure that software does everything that document specifies. So requirements are the needs and expectations from the business and users. They definitely communicate how the product should work technically. Without requirements, <coughs> we would have no way of knowing what that product was supposed to be able to do for the business. A requirement is a characteristic that a product or solution must possess. Okay? And it's exactly that. It is all of the characteristics that that program is supposed to be able to do. And if it does not perform or does not do those requirements, if we go into the application and we click on a button and it's supposed to do, it maybe open something up and it doesn't, it's not going to be acceptable to the business. We write those, those are defects. If we find while we're testing <coughs> that the application or solution is not doing what it's supposed to do, what the requirements state it should do, we immediately write up a defect. And we report that to the developers, and their job is to fix it. Our job is to make sure the software works, find the defects, and report them to the developers. The developer's job is to fix them. <coughs>